members might be uh, tending to their vote. Senator Paul, I understand, was here. He just left in order to cast that vote, and then he'll be coming back. And when he arrives, we'll allow him to give his opening statement. Uh, at, at this point, I want to just welcome our two witnesses and thank you all for joining us today for this important hearing on how the federal government can empower women entrepreneurs and unleash the potential of women-owned small businesses so they, they can continue to be a growth engine for our economy as we recover from COVID-19 pandemic. This hearing comes as we close National Women's Small Business Month during which we recognize the contributions of women entrepreneurs to our local and national economies. I look forward to National Women's Small Business Month each year because women entrepreneurs should be celebrated for prospering in spirit of the historical barriers to success that persist. National Women's Small Business Month, particularly important in my home state of Maryland, as it boasts the highest concentration of women-owned small businesses in the country. We're very proud of that, many of which are owned by minority women. It is a distinction that fills me with great pride and informs my work as chair of this committee. Today's hearing also falls two days after the 33rd anniversary of the Women's Business Ownership Act being signed into law. This landmark bill eliminated state laws that prevented women from securing a business loan without a male co-signer, and it established the Women's Business Center program at the Small Business Administration. We are now far removed from these antiquated state laws, but the past 18 months of COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated that women entrepreneurs still face many structural barriers when they start, operate, and attempt to grow small businesses. Throughout the pandemic, women entrepreneurs have been more likely to report a significant decline in the health of their business than their male counterparts, according to the research conducted by the Kaufman Foundation. And historically, women-owned small businesses lag behind male-owned small businesses in four key indicators of future business growth. Investment plans, revenue projections, staffing expectations, and access to capital. While the pandemic has shined a light on the structural barriers women still face, it has also demonstrated that the federal government can play a key role in breaking down those barriers and empowering women entrepreneurs. A recent report issued by the Government Accounting Accountability Office found that the policies championed by Senate Democrats in the Paycheck Protection Program and Health Care Enhancement Act, Economic Aid Act, and the American Rescue Plan made later rounds of the Paycheck Protection Program more equitable and accessible for underserved communities. While small business owners received only 9% of the initial PPP loans authorized by the CARES Act, the report found that the share of loans made to women-owned business, small businesses following changes made by Congress increased that to 16%. This is in line with the percentage of small businesses owned by women which is also 16%. This report is proof that through thoughtful, concerted efforts, it is possible to bridge the historical gaps that prevent underserved entrepreneurs from starting and growing small businesses. I was proud to work with my colleagues in the Senate, including several in this committee, to secure those improvements to the PPP, and I'm looking to build upon that work in the months and years ahead. Now, as Congress continues to negotiate President Biden's Build Back Better agenda, a once-in-a-generation investment in our families, communities, and small businesses, it is vital that we build on the lessons learned during the pandemic to continue investing in women entrepreneurs. That is why I'm looking forward to hearing the testimony of Tamira Lucas, founder of the Cube Cowork in Baltimore and co-founder of Moms as Entrepreneurs, Dr. Lucas will shed light on the unique barriers that women, including mothers, face on the path to business ownership. I would also like to congratulate Dr. Lucas on the Cube Co-Works grand opening of its expansion last week, making it the largest black-owned co-working space in the country. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to hearing from Women Impacting Public Policy President and CEO Candace Waterman, who advocates on behalf of women business owners uh, to Congress. I know that that organization is celebrating its 20th anniversary next month. So Candace, I want to thank you and your colleagues for your tireless efforts to empower women, small business owners over the last 
two decades. I hope to hear from you both about the tools and resources Congress can create and improve to support women on their entrepreneurship journey and ensure their success. The COVID-19 pandemic interrupted a period of tremendous growth for women-owned businesses. Women-owned businesses employ 9.2 million people, 8% of the total private sector workforce, and they generate $1.8 trillion in annual revenues, 4.3% of the annual private sector revenues. While these numbers seem small on the surface, they tell a remarkable story about the potential for women-owned small businesses from 2007 to 2018. Total employment by women-owned businesses rose 21%, while employment for all businesses declined by 0.8%. In, in, in other words, for the past decade, women-owned small businesses have been the drivers of economic growth in our economy despite the myriad headwinds they face in the path to success. This fact is even more evident when it comes to minority women. Between 2007 and 2018, businesses owned by minority women grew by more than 163%. Imagine what our women entrepreneurs could do if there were less obstacles in their way and if they had more support during their entrepreneurship journey. Supporting small businesses through the COVID-19 pandemic has been the most challenging and most important thing this committee has ever done. Our efforts to build back better in the years ahead will be another incredible challenge, but they also are our opportunity to help our economy grow in a fairer, more productive way. We simply cannot waste the time that we have to make the progress in these areas. We must commit ourselves to using this opportunity to create thoughtful policies that will empower women entrepreneurs for generations to come. And with that, let me yield to the ranking Republican member, Senator Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The chairman makes a great point that women are doing very well and uh, in small business across America and I think in every way have shown themselves to be the equal of men, if not uh, often the superior to men. But it's also, I think, inadvertently an argument for why we don't need special set-asides, you know, for, for women.